Right, when you're looking at the anterior ankle, you just use your tibialis anterior as a really useful landmark. And it's important to follow the tendon and the muscle all the way up proximally into the musculotendinous junction, into the muscle belly, and then distally onto the attachments of the tendon. Now, there's a little bonus in this video is that we're gonna show you also the peroneus tertius tendon and how to find it. Now, we're gonna have a look at the anterior ankle. So this is the lateral aspect of the screen and this is the medial aspect of the screen. And the best way of just finding the tendon of tibialis anterior, if you can't find it straight away, is just to get the patient to flex their foot up and you can see that lovely big tendon, nice solid tendon there is tibialis anterior. If we just relax the foot down and place the probe in transverse section, then you can see the tibialis anterior in the middle. Now, I want you to explore what happens to tibialis anterior as we move up, which we don't always do. You can see this retinaculum on top, keeping that in the middle, keep tilting the probe. And what happens is this tendon actually goes inside the muscle and you can see this is the intramuscular tendon just straightening it out, tilting the probe to avoid an isotropy. You can see this is the um, tibialis anterior intramuscular tendon, and you can actually follow it all the way up until it starts to become smaller, just there. As we come back down, you really see the way that the muscle forms the tendon, keep tilting the probe, and then you can follow it all the way back down to the anterior ankle. There it is sitting next to the tibia, the muscle belly. See the last few fibers of the muscle belly there? Going in, going in, and now it's just the tendon. And of course we can follow that down really slowly. Take your time, keep it in the middle. And remember it does go a little bit more medial than you think. There's the Taylor dome. How do we know it's the Taylor dome? Because it's got that nice pyramid shape and it's got articular cartilage on top. Just follow that as we go down. Can you see I'm just losing a bit of contact, so I just push down the probe, and it actually goes quite medially, and as you can see, the tendon there. Now, if you lose the tendon, you can actually use an isotropy to your advantage to make it darker. Can you see there? And then we can continue to follow down until it goes on to its attachment point onto the medial cuneiform there. You can also spin on that, and you can get a really nice long image as it goes onto the medial cuneiform, and then you can obviously follow that up proximally. So that's tibialis anterior. If we then move laterally, we should see a very small tendon. You've got the Taylor dome here, you've got articular cartilage, and you've got your dorsalis pedis. Now, can you see, I just turned the gain up a little bit. Can you see there's a little tendon just sitting there? That's tibialis anterior, so we're lateral to that and it's got a very distal muscle belly. Now I think that is extensor hallucis longus, but don't guess, find out. If you just ask your patient to wiggle their big toe, yet yeah, you can see the muscle belly moving and the tendon. So we know that's extensor hallucis longus. Now, if we follow that up, we can see the muscle belly gets bigger and it almost forms a column. Can you see that column there as we go up? So you've got tibialis anterior here, muscle belly, you've got extensor hallucis longus here, and then you can see there's another column here, which is gonna be your extensor digitorum, which we're gonna have a look at but let, in a minute. But let's just have a look. This is EHL. Now, can you see this column of muscle belly here? Now, if you're not sure, again, just ask the patient to wiggle their toe, and look at that. You can see that column of EHL muscle belly working really nicely. You could then just ask them to dorsiflex, and you get that tib, eight, tib ant muscle contraction, but obviously they all work together. So using your EHL just to wiggle the toe really differentiates that. And then you can follow that tendon up proximally, which is a really good skill training thing to do. So we found tib ant, we found EHL. Now, what have we got more laterally? I'll just move my thumb a little bit. As we come back down, pick up that EHL again, just above the Taylor dome, Tibia falls away, Taylor dome comes up. How do we know it's the Taylor dome? It's got articular cartilage. Now, if we just move laterally, we can see another little muscle belly here. And I think this is extensor digitorum longus. But again, don't think, don't guess, prove it to yourself. Because as we know, as we go further down, now extensor digitorum should split 
into four tendons. See a little bit of fluid coming out of the joint there. So as we look here, can we see four slips? Yes, we can. We can see one, two, three, four. Now I'm just going to tr just blow this up a little bit more so we can see extensor digitorum as it comes down. Can you see one, two, three, four. Now, what have we got over here? Now, this is an interesting case. This is a normal variant. And this is, if you notice that you've got five extensor digitorums or you've got one more just tendon a little bit more laterally, that's actually perineus tertius. Now, normally this will then go down onto the fifth. So let's just have a look. Let's keep following it. Keep following it down. Keep following it down. Keep following it down. Keep following it down and there it's going on to the fifth. So yes, this is perineus tertius. If you just want to confirm that, you can also go into a long section, which is a little bit more tricky, but look at that lovely image, perineus tertius. We can just fishtail that end of the probe and it's going into the fifth metatarsal there. So that's a nice example of perineus tertius. Remember the tip to remember that is have a look at extensor digitorum, there's Tiban, there's EHL, wiggle your big toe, come over to extensor digitorum. And actually in this case, you can already see the perineus tertius, but just confirm that, come more distally. One, two, three, four, hang on, we've got five, and that's perineus tertius there. Did you find that video useful? If you did, don't worry, we've got loads more videos for you. You can like our videos, you can make a comment, you can subscribe to our channel to get all of our new videos and you can even join our membership. Good luck scanning.